Hi guys, it's Tiptop Hero, and today I'll be showing you basic lighting and advanced lighting on Sony 4D R13. Now, um, if you model something basic, like if you take a cube and just edit it, or just add more segments, is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a basic shape and edit it and just ex and grab this and just extrude some bits or stuff like this and maybe you could extrude that and then maybe that like that um it looks a bit random I know but you'll see what I mean so if I render this now it will just look like an object that isn't Awesome. If I put in hypernerves, it looks better, but it's still not epic. So what I like to do is I grab a floor and place it there, and then grab another another floor and place it 90 degrees upward, which you do by hitting the rotate tool, holding down shift, and then just pulling it till it says 90 degrees. Now I just push that back, and you can duplicate this by selecting command V, command C, or command C, command V, same thing. And um, you just do the same thing on the other side if you have to. Now, it looks starting to look better. Now, you can add a light, which is kind of okay, but it's not the best mean, means of lighting. So you've got this here, you've got a light, you know you can render, you'll have light. So what I do always is I always turn on ambient occlusion and global illumination. This makes it the render have better shadows and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> yeah, better shadows and better global illumination basically. So if I render this now, you'll see all these little dots, and the little white dots are um, where the light is. So, as you can see now, it looks better already, but it's still not good, as in best quality. So, what I do, I've got in my content browser a light that I've made, which is pretty big. And now if I render, you'll see it's really bright, because it's fa it's just... Um, basically using HDRI and as you can see it just looks smooth slick and got awesome shadows and that's what I use all the time so to make this light what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make new and it's extremely simple there's nothing hard about it go into your splines uh, the squiggly lines of spline free hand spline and grab a rectangle make the rectangle XZ axis and make it as big as you want but keep it as a square. I'm going to keep mine at 500 by 500 centimeters like so. Now duplicate it by selecting Control C, Control V or Command C, Command V and just make this um, 300 instead of 500 or 200 depending. Now make this now put it up about 150 about or I'm gonna say hundred I'm gonna say I'm saying hundred and thirty five or hundred and forty five. Now duplicate this again by doing the same method and put and put it up about thirty six centimeters. Now make it a hundred in in height and if you're using uh if you're not using the same just divide it so say if you're using 400 instead of 500 you'd make it 50 so now what you want to do is you're going to go onto this little box thing with a, a green circle in it hold it down, these are called nerves and nerves do a lot of things like latte nerves make if you draw a spline and then put it in latte nerves it will turn it round in um, a rotation and um, stuff like that so we're going to grab a loft nerves and we're going to place all these in here and it makes this kind of basic shape 
Now you can play with these, which is what I'm going to do now, um, like that. I'd put it up about 17 centimeters more. So that's basically your box. Now, now what you want to do is you want to grab a plane and say 500 centimeters and 500 centimeters, the same size as your box. Now, what you want to do is you want to go here, make a new material, check off um, color and specular, and check on luminance. Put luminance as 500%. Um, this is just going to be our basic light, and place this on the plane. Oops. Now, you render this out, and if you, if you can see white, which you can't ever normally, then you've you've done something wrong. But go here, and you want to go on the y-axis, and you want to go down one. Or what I do is I go zero point three down. I think it is. I oh, know it's minus zero. Point, yeah, minus minus zero point three. And there you have your box. That's your basic box. Now, grab them all objects and group objects and name it light. And just drag it into your content browser. But um, now I'm just going to show you examples with it. So, place the light up, <coughs> grab a floor, grab another floor, rotate the other floor 90 degrees and place it back like so. Now I'm just going to make a random object with a spline so freehand like that and I'm just going to grab a star make this star um, very small actually I'll make it extremely small um, it's a radius of and one. Oh, that's a bit small. That'll do. Alright, now I'm gonna just gonna grab the sweet nerves and place these in here. And just have some kind of random object. So this is without global illumination. Looks rubbish. This is with global illumination. Now, you should, if you've done this right, um, have the right kind of lighting you want. But here, as you can see, I've placed the light too high up, which is not good ever. So, what I've done, I think, is I've got the plane... plane was in the wrong um, section, so I'm just going to place this at minus, oops, whoa, calm down, <laughs> minus 0 0.5, that'll do, and render this out, and you should get a nice image in the end, um, I've done something wrong here, I think, I don't know what I have done wrong, um, uh, there we go. So you should get uh, lots of lighting, and lighting is always good, but you need to play around with the, with the strength of the lum uh, luminance, whatever it is. Um, and you will get some pretty awesome effects. But never render in standard definition, always render in high quality, which is global illumination and ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is good for shadows, and global illumination is just perfect for lighting. So yeah, um, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and if you want more tutorials, please say, and yeah, peace.